Okay, lovely shockwave people. Um, Paul Hober here again. I'm going to talk about radial shockwave, radial pressure wave as it should be known, um, and EPAT as it's known in the States. Now, here we have a device which most people enter the shockwave world with. Um, this is a pressure wave. It's not specifically um, a true shockwave, but it is a phenomenal piece of equipment. I've got the standard applicator head. If you want to know more about applicator heads, there's another video in this series which talks about that. I want to talk about the technique. Um, there's, there's an interesting point to be made that people say, oh, this is simple, switch it on, stick it on the bit you want to treat, and, and away you go. There's protocols on the screen, everything's fine, just don't worry about it. It's really simple and easy to use. Do you know what? So is a scalpel, you know, just a shiny blade but in someone's hands, it's lethal and life-threatening. In a surgeon's hands, it's life-saving. You would say that simple, you just cut anywhere. You know, that blade will cut whatever you ask it to cut. Um, you could say that this will produce a shockwave. Not so, these things are more complicated than some people would like to make out. So I just wanna go through six key factors that I believe you should think about when using this piece of equipment. So the first thing is the settings which is why I've got the machine on at the moment. And you need to think about what your settings are going to be. Um, Standardised 12 hertz, so that's how many shots a second are being released here. Um, and standardised, you'd be looking at 2.5 bar pressure. But what does that mean? We've got a warm up phase of 1.5 bar pressure and um, probably a higher hertz, if you want my opinion, you go right the way up to 21 hertz, which is very, very fast, but that's still not even 50% of a TENS machine. And what are we trying to do with a warm-up phase? We're trying to numb the tissues. So if a TENS machine does that at 50 hertz, we want to get this machine as high as we can and numb those tissues off, probably for 1,000, 1,500 shocks all on their own. Then the treatment phase, we're aiming to be hitting around a five out of 10 on the pain scale. So your settings become important to you once you've got the feedback from the patient. But settings is the first thing. Don't just take what the screen says. Don't just go for um, what, you, what you pick the machine up and it's set at that. Think about your patient, make it patient centric. The next thing is the speed. People, this is a big one. Let's say I'm gonna treat this area of muscle. I see people zapping up and down at this kind of speed. I see people completely stationary, not looking to cover very much of, of an area. You want to be thinking slow and steady. Yeah, slow and steady wins the day. And you want to be moving this so that you're thinking, well, if I'm doing 12 shots a second, I can move this and still be looking to cover a huge volume of shockwaves into that area. Going up and down like this too fast, I don't think that very much is happening. So speed, slow and steady wins the day. Now position. We've got to think about where, where the energy is coming out. It's coming out this little disc here and it's fanning out in a radial fashion. We want that to be getting into the tissue. So it must be perpendicular to the tissue. We can't be going diagonal and letting all of that energy slide out of the handpiece and not into the skin. So always perpendicular to the skin. So if we've got my arm here, as we move around, the angle will change, but that's because I'm keeping the equipment perpendicular to the skin. If I start to drift off, you'll see the silver end there and we're losing energy. We want to keep that in the right position at all times. The next thing is pressure. If we're trying to work on tissue and we don't get a little bit of indent pressure, so if I'm just working here with no pressure at all, I'm losing energy all the time. A little bit of indent pressure. I'm not pushing this through to next week. I just want the whole of that little tip there to disappear and be surrounded by the dermis, by the skin tissue. And then I know that I've got contact with my muscle, tendon, ligament, whatever it is I'm trying to work on. Now, area. We talk about there being 2,500 shocks with an EPAT or radial machine, but I mean, 
how far we're trying to cover with that 2,500 shocks. We're trying to cover the whole body. So I'm going to suggest that you work over the area about the size of a packet of playing cards for that amount of, of shocks. So standard pack of playing cards, that's roughly the area that you're going to be working to. So if you've got to cover a larger area, then you're going to be doing more shocks. So a quadriceps might be 6,000 shocks to cover the whole leg. Okay, it might be even 8,000 shocks. But if you're working around the Achilles tendon, we're around the size of a pack of playing cards. The bigger muscle, if you're working on muscle tissue, you can probably double that. But around a tendon, um, specifically, you're looking about the size of a pack of playing cards. If you're talking about over a muscle tissue, you're probably doubling that area. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a rough guide not to be swiping up and down all over the body thinking you can cover someone that's, you know, six foot four in 2,000 shots. Um, and lastly um, is activity. What do we do once we've given that treatment? We need to be thinking cleverly about how we're going to strengthen or maybe even mobilise that area we've treated because there is no panacea treatment cure it all. There is no one thing that is going to solve everyone's problems. So we've got to start thinking intelligently about how we're going to develop that patient. And that comes down to the activity level. So what exercises are we giving? How frequently and how many sets? So what are we looking at in terms of is it a standard three sets of 15? A bit boring, I know, but is that every day? Is that twice a day? Is that every other day? What is your exercise management? If you want more on exercise prescription, then put that in the comments and I'll do a whole video talking about that. All right, hopefully that's been helpful. So remember, settings, speed, position, pressure, area, and the activity. Go get them.